The agenda for today will be a quick uh, introduction about uh, borehole image, uh, definition, uh, why we use it, uh, different kind of borehole images. Uh, then uh, we'll go through uh, the applications of borehole uh, images, the different aspects in uh, oil industry uh, of, utilize, of utilization of borehole uh, image uh, data. Uh, then we will uh, go through more uh, technical stuff, uh, not, not that heavy, uh, but to understand, uh, to understand what can uh, we see uh, from uh, the image, mainly uh, the geological uh, features that we can uh, pick or we can figure it uh, from the borehole image. And then we can uh, apply it in, in reservoir characterization in terms of oil mm -hmm. and gas uh, production. Uh, firstly, I would like to, uh, to have a quick survey uh, with you guys. Uh, maybe you can uh, type uh, in chat. Uh, firstly, how many uh, we have uh, either student or uh, postgraduate? So either you are a student now or you are uh, graduated. This is the first one. And my uh, friend, you can uh, help me uh, uh, announcing the result that uh, appear in, uh, in chat. OK, usually I. Uh, I prefer to uh, in most of borehole image session to start with this uh, one. Uh, but actually, for this is for uh, whom uh, that heard about uh, borehole image uh, before. It's very common that we uh, have uh, this terminology common in uh, either in, in, in the university or in the oil uh, industry. All it's about borehole image. We have the meter uh, FMI uh, borehole image. This is uh, similar to each other, uh, and uh, it's very widely uh, used among uh, the uh, geoscience students or uh, the petroleum uh, engineers. So, do anybody uh, know what is the difference between uh, this? Any volunteer can. Uh, have an idea, read it before, uh, listen about this before, uh, work it on this before, can uh, just quickly in uh, one minute uh, give, give us like a small uh, feedback or explanation about uh, this terminology. Don't be shy, I mean, uh, this is just discussion. Uh, we are not uh, making exams. Either uh, you can, uh, if you don't want to talk, you can type uh, in chat and I'll see it as well. Also, if you, uh, if you know just one of them, and if you hear Hello. about one of them. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am, full, I am fine and you? I am you. from Algeria. Thank you for the initiative. Yeah, thank you. For the deep meter, the deep meter is the inclination of the layer. And okay. the FMI is the tool who, uh, which gave to us uh, the, the, the quality of the, of the borehole. Okay. Borehole uh, image is the result of the FMI, if I am not mistaken. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you for uh, this answer. Uh, that's why I put this uh, slide because some people uh, really confuse uh, between uh, these terminology. But what you said is uh, is is partially uh, right. But let's uh, explain it. The meter. Uh, this is uh, a very uh, generic term used for 
يعني from 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 the the word itself dip and meter. Dip it's uh, regarding the inclination uh, as uh, Fauzia mentioned and uh, meter it's anything for measuring like thermometer, barometer, avometer, whatever. So it's kind of measuring the dip. And usually dip meter uh, professionally in a professional wise it's it's used for the tools, the primitive tool of bore hole image. The first tool was only for uh, measuring the dip, to measure the dip and see how is the angle. This is what we call it dip meter. Borehole image, it's like advancement of the dip meter. So we moved from just me measuring the dip by a way or other, to getting uh, image, to getting image for the borehole. And hence, we can see lots. This is we can see by eye. Uh, we can see, firstly, you get the dip of the feature. Just you have layer. You see how much the uh, inclination or how much the angle of this uh, layer. But now you can see it in front of you. You can see. And then you can determine uh, what is the type of this uh, layer. And also, you can measure the quality, as uh, as said, uh, because you see, FMI, it's tool. This is the name of the tool, Schlumberger image tool, common in the industry. Formation stands for formation micro imager, formation micro imager, and this is the most uh, known. Or, um, tool uh, for people uh, that uh, used uh, that get used to use uh, borehole images, but we have also other uh, tools from other uh, respected service provider, uh, not only for Schlumberger, uh, but because FMI was common at, at a certain time, or because it was a good invention uh, at a certain time, so most of people start calling any kind of borehole image data or any kind of dip meter data as this is FMI, uh, just as common, common, uh, common tool. Uh, but we have uh, other tools. So now maybe you can, this is maybe one of the, uh, the first uh, value or the first uh, uh, idea uh, you get it from uh, this session. Very uh, simply, you can uh, differentiate, you can classify, you can uh, discriminate between dip meter, FMI, and uh, borehole image. If you have any question, we will, uh, usually the session will be around one hour uh, at max. And then we will have like 10, 15 minutes at uh, the end to answer all your queries. Okay, very important and it's also uh, very common when we hear about uh, poor hole image, we can hear about the dip. The dip, as I mentioned in many sessions, personally, I call it the language of the image. If you, uh, you type dip in, uh, in Google uh, search, you will find this one. Uh, which is uh, also, uh, but the dip we are uh, talking about, it's not uh, this one. We are talking about the dip of the strata, dip of layers, dip of rock layers. Any planar uh, layer should have a dip. The dip for us mean that this uh, layer has dip angle. So the amount of dip, either a horizontal layer or inclined uh, layer. So if, if you look to my hand, this is horizontal one or almost a flat layer. But if we do it like this, so by the way, dip is like you merge something or you uh, something is deepening or diving so that's why this is the word dip 
something like diving or uh, decreasing or something. This is the translation of the dip. Uh, but for us, the dip is the inclination. So changing the angle, this is a dip. So any layer for, uh, for us uh, should have, should has uh, two component for the dip, either angle. So how much is the angle? Is it 10 degree, 20 degree, and, and so on. And also the azimuth or the, the dip direction. This one is referring to this direction or referring to that direction or referring to this uh, direction. So very important while studying either uh, outcrop geology for people studying, uh, for example, structure, uh, structural uh, should know this uh, terminology uh, very well. Um, and should have a tool uh, measuring this, uh, which tool that measure this in the outcrop? This is a light question. Start type in chat. Which tool? Mm. In the, in the outcrop, the field, the gabel, in the mountain, in the outcrop, in the desert. What is the tool we use it for measuring the dip direction and dip angle? Good. Uh, we call it compass or inclinometer. This is uh, right. Proton we have different kind of compass. We don't want to uh, talk uh, deeply about this, but this is, yeah, right, compass. Thank you. Here in, in, uh, in our, uh, this is for surface measuring, for outcrop measuring, for uh, subsurface or for borehole or for uh, See about oil and gas, uh, we use the dip meter tool. Okay, this is just uh, stay tuned with me if you if you uh, you are not hearing the sound or you didn't see it very uh, clear. Just let me uh, know. Here we see that with one measuring electrode along with an electrode used to correct for changes in recording speed. And here, a pad with two measuring electrodes located side by side, along with a speed correction button. A special type of dip meter device uses a pad with a cluster of electrodes to provide an electronic image of the borehole wall. In order to beds or laminations that commonly establish bedding plane surfaces, micro-resistivity devices are used that produce a vertical resolution in the order of one centimeter. Let's illustrate the measurement. As a forearm dip meter tool moves up the borehole, each pad numbered one, two, three, and four emits current into the formation. As one pad, in this case pad three, intersects a dipping bedding plane, we see a change in the current emitted. Similarly, as the next pad, here pad two, makes the traverse across the same lithologic boundary or bedding plane, it undergoes a change in the current emitted as does the next pad, number four. Okay, uh, the voice was clear. The sound was okay for you. Okay, thank you. So this is, this is a very common uh, video uh, about uh, the meter or borehole image. Uh, you, will, you will find it in YouTube or uh, people that uh, have uh, Schlumberger uh, learning uh, CDs for uh, oil and gas uh, exploration and production should see uh, this one as well. Uh, I like this animation uh, because this is the concept. If you understand this one, now you will understand how the principle of measuring dip using, uh, using the dip meter. So this is the hole. 
suppose now you see uh, the cursor uh, is running. This is the hole, and this is an inclined layer or dipping layer. So this inclined layer uh, should reveal anomaly while measuring. Why? Because it in 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 in, in, in uh, dip meter we have like as we have like arms here. We have arm here and arm here and arm here, and sensor here and sensor here. So whatever it intersect with this anomaly, it will give us the the reading for this one or this micro uh, resistivity anomaly for this any planar feature uh, layer uh, fracture uh, fold anything that may makes anomaly or different uh, response in the hole which is borehole should give this uh, this shape or this uh, response Okay, let's let's uh, let's uh, here I'll highlight something here. Event is recorded at a different depth. Okay, uh, let's use the annotation. So now I don't know if you see this one or not. See, this is now represent the uh, la the, the layer. Uh, that we see this was inclined layer like this so this now it's represent the uh, layer that it was uh, displayed in, in, in the video so to get the dip we connect this one this will so for example if we have a flat one uh, Let's 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 share uh, another one. Sorry for this. Do you see now? Uh, do you see what I'm drawing now? Okay, do you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, my friend just uh, helped me. I mean, <laughs> sure, sir, definitely. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is just to uh, imagine how the, the things go. So for example, for example, you have a layer like this. Sorry for this uh, croaky, just uh, want to And you have like inclined layer, for example, like this one. Then you you will you will cut, you will drill a well here, and you will cut uh, this layer. This is the hole.
And this layer, it will become like this. Right? So now by getting the anomaly, when you cross the layer, you, you will start cut, you start see this layer here and this layer here, and this layer here and this layer, here. This, then you will get this shape. Then we can determine the depth based on what we see uh, in the borehole because the layer, we cut it in different or we see it in different sides of the hole. For example, in this side and in this side and then this side and then this side. Then, so if we have a flat layer, you will see that the response is close to each other because this is flat. But for this one or the inclined one, you will see that the response is like this. This area or this response, it will be uh, away from each other. So we, we will have a big distance between the readings that's why this is indicate that this one is high angle. For the flat response, it will be closer to, uh, so this, uh, this is just simply, uh, uh, if you understand this one, now you will understand the concept of uh, measuring the deep data and also if further for the image, you will understand how we get uh, this deep amount or how we get this deep value. Uh, then using a function here, uh, because you will get this, you, you will have the diameter of the hole, and you will get this uh, distance, this is the diameter of the hole, and this is, this one, it's the distance between the first reading and the, the, the maximum one and the minimum one, so this you have, you, you will get this distance, for, for example, if we have this one A and this one B, then we can get this angle, you know, from the, uh, from the triangometry uh, tan, this one, you will get this one over this one, and then you make it shift tan, you will get the angle for this one. So this is a concept. So what is the known? It's the diameter of the hole, you know the diameter of the hole, what you measure at this distance based on the reading, if, uh, if the reading is far uh, from each other, you will get higher distance that indicate that this uh, layer is uh, high angle layer. And then this is variable. This is based on the whole diameter. Then you can uh, get this angle, this one. So this is just crooky to understand what it, the concept of uh, measuring the uh, dip date. We'll, uh, we'll come back to uh, the presentation. Is it okay now? You can see uh, the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, borehole image, uh, so the, de the process itself or the, uh, the development of dip meter, uh, firstly, we have uh, one sensor and then this is uh, 50, 1956. Uh, then getting more uh, advancement to more uh, sensor, just uh, more sensor than most of sense till we reach to the, uh, the, 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 the phase that we have an image. This is uh, the shape of the dip meter. We will explain this now. This is the, uh, you know, the, 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 the reading itself, the anomaly that I show, I show it uh, if every uh, one, then there is correlation happen here as I, as, as I, uh, as I explained. Then this uh, shapes or this arrows, what we call it tadpole, I'll explain it, indicate the, uh, the amount and direction of dip at each level of this uh, reading. And this is the shape of the image. 
So, for example, so now you see the feature from the image. If you uh, reach to the level of the image, you will see how the feature looks. From the deep meter, you will just get the response from the limited sensor uh, that you have. So, moving from just limited sensor, make correlation, get it to you can see uh, in front of your eyes how the feature uh, look like if we consider this one as high angle uh, feature. Okay, for the applications, uh, we mentioned now the dip, so, and we mentioned geological features. If you have a dip and geological feature, for sure you will use this one to measure the, the structural uh, parameters like structural dip to get the structural dip, to get the fracture, to get the folds, to get the folds, and to get the unconformities. Also for sedimentary uh, stuff, to measure the sedimentary dip. Uh, by the way, the structural dip, this is the dip um, affected by uh, the structural uh, or the tectonic uh, impact. So this is after deposition. After the deposition occurred, we have uh, some uh, tectonic stuff or some structural movement uh, affected uh, the layers. Then you will get uh, this uh, structural dip, sedimentary dip. This is we getting we get the, the sedimentary dip while the deposition, the inherited dip uh, that. The sediment is uh, while deposition. This is uh, what we call it the sedimentary the uh, value current direction. We will talk about it. Uh, anisotropy or the, the different levels of porosity and permeability that makes anisotropy between different reservoir zones. This is also we'll uh, talk about it. Uh, and uh, the value of the borehole uh, of the borehole imaging in determining the very uh, small uh, or high resolution uh, thin layers, cell lamination. In rock texture also, uh, we will uh, see how the borehole image will help us or because you see uh, the shape of the grain, the shape of the layers. So what we see it in the outcrop, usually, in a, in a different manner, you see it in the uh, subsurface or in the borehole. So for people that studying primary structure or sedimentary structure in, in the outcrop, uh, be ready because you will correlate what you see in the outcrop with what we uh, see it in the subsurface uh, geology or in the borehole. So many kinds of texture. Uh, grain size, uh, lamination, uh, cavities, uh, lots of stuff we will uh, see. Uh, also, uh, we have geomechanical application. Geomechanical application, this is regarding stress change, strain change, convection, uh, collapsing in, in, in the borehole, uh, getting some uh, deformation due to the stress we have, the change in mud weight. So all this will bring or it will show some uh, feature in the borehole that this feature, it can be interpreted and it can give us indication about uh, the direction of, of, of uh, these stresses. And hence we can avoid it, uh, avoid it in, in, in further drilling and also we can maintain uh, a stable drilling environment. Also, we can recommend uh, mud weight, uh, for example, like building a mechanical uh, earth model. So you will, uh, it, it will use some uh, information from the borehole image to uh, recommend uh, relevant mud weight, especially in the uh, HBHT, high pressure, high temperature uh, wells. Uh, also, we get from the image, uh, you see the, the feature at, at the depths. So you can recommend uh, zones for, uh, because you see in front of you, what in this zone in a high resolution way. So you can recommend 
the sweet spot uh, interval uh, for uh, taking or the, the zone of interest for measuring the uh, uh, formation pressure or getting uh, side wheel core uh, sample at this uh, level. Also, uh, all these parameters, it can be uh, reflected or it can be uh, integrated to build a model, to build facies model, to build structural model, to build um, fracture model, yani getting these milestones or small uh, parameters or these features and integrate it with, uh, with other wells uh, or do it for lots of wells, maybe in a scale of uh, 10 wells and or maybe also in a scale of field, maybe also in a scale of concession. And then you can get the model, uh, the different geological and geophysical uh, models that we have this uh, image can add uh, to this model and it can enhance it. Okay, uh, this is a question. Uh, do we use the borehole image to know the lithology or lithological composition? Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we can use it. Okay, any other, any other uh, opinion? Yes, sir, we can hear you so perfectly. Hmm? Yes, sir, we can hear you perfectly. Okay. Uh, anyone else uh, can uh, answer this? Okay, uh, unfortunately, borehole image is not designed uh, for determining the lithological composition. Yani you will not get the borehole image to, uh, I'll not uh, maybe as owner or as a owner of a well or uh, company, I'll not run the borehole image to uh, tell me I have sandstone or carbonate or dolomite or anhydrite and so on and, uh, and else. Why? Be simply why? Because I have other tools to uh, do this job. Uh, either to get it from uh, mud logging, the cutting itself, you can know the lithological composition, explain uh, the sand and the grain size and different stuff. Or there is another tools. It can uh, give high resolution uh, mineralogical composition. What they call it, elemental elemental capture, uh, like ECS. Uh, but uh, borehole image can help in getting uh, further uh, information or more value because we have sandstone. Sandstone, and you stop. This is not enough. But to tell you or to yeah, explain to you that this sandstone is massive. This is uh, no other tools will tell you this. Uh, laminated, uh, thin laminated, uh, cross bedded. Uh, for the carbonate, it's foggy, not foggy, uh, fractured, not fractured. So, the, 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 the dip itself of this sandstone, uh, is it a horizontal layer of sandstone? Is it inclined layer of sandstone? This is very, very important information. And this is what borehole image uh, held. Uh, firstly, the dip, then the texture. So dip and texture, and under dip and texture, lots of utilization, very uh, important in reservoir characterization. So uh, because this is uh, also one of the uh, very common queries or very common maybe uh, misunderstanding for 
uh, about the uh, porthole image. Okay, uh, this is simply the 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 uh, what we call it tadpole. Tadpole uh, it give us indication about the so each value of them should be represented by tadpole. Tadpole this is give us indication about the amount of dip 10 15 and, and and else and this one this arrow or this tail uh, it give us the direction or azimuth so the amount of dip and direction of dip so the scale here is from the 0 to 90 so 10 12 h1 it's uh, 10 20 till reach 90 this is the maximum dip magnitude and if, uh, for the direction uh, west north east also some people uh, can represent the, the direction by uh, degrees uh, for example uh, zero degree north 90 degree east uh, 180 south 270 and 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 so on okay so um, to summarize the applications, we use it in a structural interpretation, which is false, false. This is very important. We have seismic. Seismic data can give us uh, lots of information about this uh, and very important information about this. But borehole image data can fine tune this reading, uh, can because the scale, we have big. Uh, gap or big uh, difference between the, the scale of seismic, which is very coarse, very big uh, regional scale, and the scale of the borehole, uh, getting the real data from the borehole. So this is, we can use it in calibration, in correlation. So very important. Uh, also, in case if you don't have uh, that good seismic quality data, which is very common as well, that you don't have uh, a good seismic quality data uh, at that time, uh, borehole image and meter data will be very uh, useful in such uh, situations. And also uh, stratigraphic, and this is the real geology. Geology is mainly structural and stratigraphic. A uh, lot of stuff after deposition and uh, due to tectonism, and many stuff also uh, during the deposition, uh, the shape. Uh, primary structure, lots of stuff that indicate lots of information help us in exploring oil and gas uh, reservoir. Okay, this is uh, how uh, the dip meter data reflect the, the uh, shape uh, of the strata itself. If you have, this is just cartoon. Uh, if you have inclined the bit, uh, but this bed, uh, this bed or this layers has uh, have similar uh, depth, so it will come like this. So this is inclined, but all similar to each other. We will get this one. This is passing through different inclination. That's why you will get this shape. As I mentioned, the shift shift of this that bull indicate the change in depth magnitude. A change in the arrow. To this direction or to this direction, this is indicate what the direction. Or we can get this one. Many, many, many. We have many scenarios. We have many uh, scenarios, uh, either due to structural uh, process or or structural impact, or due to stratigraphy, sedimentary stuff. Uh, one of the most important uh, uh, info that we can get it from a dip meter data, which is the fault. Uh, fault, uh, one of the uh, uh, major changes that the fault can do it is the change in dip. That's why dip meter device or dip meter measurement can measure the dip uh, above and below the fault and get the indication of fault uh, impact in uh, in a zone. Uh, from where? From what we call it uh, drag. You know the drag? The drag uh, you have due to the movement or due to the uh, deformation action that done by uh, the fault, 
we got some dragging deformation dragged for us as uh, dip interpreters it will make it a, a change in dip that's why uh, we get high angle see from the seismic the layers here it's uh, almost horizontal or flat or slightly inclined but when you got uh, you get closer to uh, for example here this is a very uh, good example uh, you will get a, a change in depth. You get high angle, and then you are getting low angle. So when when you drill a well here, for example, uh, so and you cut the fault, you will get this change, uh, maybe similar to this, uh, yani closer to this one. This is not the case, but I'm just uh, giving you uh, some similarity. You will get something big change in, in the depth that indicate you cut something here. This is simply. Uh, what 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 we uh, really uh, see uh, from the dip meter day. Many many examples about this. Uh, for example, if you have something like uh, rollover, uh, uh, you will have maybe similar to this stuff. If you have like uh, drag pattern due to due to uh, overturned bits, and uh, maybe in, in a thrust fault. Uh, you will you will get also a change. It will be reflected in a debit change, change in dip and the change. Uh, some some stuff it can make a change in dip only, and some other stuff based on the uh, anatomy of the strata itself. It can give change in dip magnitude, or it can also give a change in dip uh, azimuths. So this is will be. Uh, an important indication because when I uh, when I interpret the data, I'll not see this model. This model it will be in my mind eye, but this one this is what I really see. So I'll make a uh, model in my mind about what I see, uh, also with integration with other data or from other wells. Also, this is the case. Uh, we can get it more difficult uh, because we, we will see lots of dip meter better or dip data better so and your as an interpreter your uh, rule is to uh, interpret this better uh, to get something out of it uh, here in, 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 a, in a thrust fault and here also uh, unconformity uh, unconformity uh, means uh, contrast between layers above and below this surface, what, uh, what we call it unconformity, the change in dip angle above and below uh, a certain surface or a certain level. So this is inclined bits and this is horizontal bits due to what unconformity or angular unconformity. Angular unconformity is the change or the, the contrast is due to the change in angle or the contrast in dip angle above and below the unconformity level. Okay, so this is something because this is confusing for lots of people. So then, no, in reality, we see it. this is an example of the thrust uh, or uh, uh, fold bend uh, fold. See, folding and this thrusting, something like this. It's very common in Europe. Uh, and this is uh, what we have it uh, in the unconformity, some. Uh, inclined strata, strata. This is not exactly what, this is not exactly uh, that, but just a similar example from outcrop. This is inclined bit, and then above the inclined bit, we have horizontal bit. But when we cut this one by a dip meter device or subsurface in a subsurface hole, you will get this uh, pattern. You will get low angle, then high angle. Okay, we can have also stratigraphic changes due to channel stuff, that, uh, due to uh, squeezing or compaction of the channel, change in depth due to channel or due to, to or due to uh, refill. So this is stratigraphic feature, change in depth due to stratigraphic feature, and the other due to structural uh, features. Also, uh, cross bedding is very important. Uh, we, we see change in, uh, in dip data due to cross bedding uh, as the rebels or the decline of uh, uh, we have from the cross beds. 
uh, this is just a, يعني, you can you can see like a change in dip like this and we have like a fold uh, example for example uh, overturn it uh, fold this is this is just to to make it closer to your uh, mind what what يعني, correlate what you see from the dip meter with what you see from the uh, reality Okay, uh, simple uh, explanation about uh, the borehole image. It's mapping the borehole. So we map the borehole. But in this situation, uh, we have lots of this one, of these. Uh, if you remember, we was correlating two, three for this from this sensors. But if you have 192 sensor or more, then you, you can end up by image. It's not like light capture image, but it's uh, process the image uh, from the micro resistivity uh, data that we have. We have many sensors. This sensor is covering different areas from the borehole. Then you process this one by a specific way to get this, what we call it, borehole image to see the feature in front of you, not only the dip. So now you will start to move from the level of seeing the dip to the seeing the borehole the borehole itself. Uh, this is this is what 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 we call it the camera downhole camera borehole image. That what I'm talking about. Uh, it's not uh, like the downhole camera. Downhole camera you get like a camera similar like a uh, camera and this camera we uh, they uh, force it uh, they enter it in, in the hole and then start seeing what inside the hole. structures uh, cavities layers. So maybe some people you, you can uh, ask why we don't use this camera in uh, real drilling, because in our in environment in our environment this one it can be used in work over uh, after casing you have the whole is, uh, vacuum or water so you can see, but our, in our drilling we use mud so and we we can go to further depths high pressure, high temperature, drilling environment, uh, torque, mechanics, stuff, lots of stuff. So that's why we have uh, the borehole image that we use micro resistivity device or micro resistivity sensors uh, to measure uh, the uh, change in, in layers and then process to see the real image. But this one, it's direct seeing, like direct camera, you, uh, you, you, you see from this uh, camera. We have many, uh, many uh, image, uh, many borehole image common in the industry. Uh, as one of our friends mentioned in the chat, uh, uh, not only FMI, we have uh, XRMI, uh, OBMI, like FMI, uh, Earth Imager, XRMI, CAST, you got many, many kind of image data we have it in the industry. So now this is the dip meter. Uh, so you, you will see the uh, sensors and the change in the layers as I explained. This is what, what we get it from the dip meter. And here, what you see it after getting the image. So moving from just seeing curves and predict what we have and correlate what we have from these curves to real measuring, to, to see. What, what, what is this feature? Uh, this one, we call it sine wave. Sine wave or any inclined uh, bed will appear in a 2D. So now you will unfold, uh, yani you, this is your, uh, your hole, you, you will unroll what you see. So you end up by this uh, shape. And this is inclined layer, and this is highly inclined layer. Maybe if we have another section, you will see flat layer, just straight line. In uh, in borehole image, we see the borehole image data in colors. Usually, this this is a common palette of colors. See, uh, white. Uh, dark yellow, uh, dark brown, and, and else. 
So in, in borehole image, uh, white or uh, this yellow stuff or this is light uh, color means that you have a resistive, uh, resistive indica indication for the high resistivity stuff. As you're getting toward the dark stuff, you are getting toward more conductive stuff. So you see uh, the borehole image data in terms of two stuff, conductive, which is dark one, and resistive, which يعني, uh, is uh, resistive one. Uh, so your eye uh, is conductivity measurement, conductive and resistive. How you see the layers or how you see the different layers in or how you see the contrast between layers uh, from the change in conductivity. Like, you, for example, you have carbonate, which is resistive, and then you have shale, which is conductive. Due to this contrast between carbonate uh, resistivity, which is high, and shale resistivity, which is low, you start see the things. In, in, uh, in image data also we have uh, kind of normalization or different kind of normalization. If you deal with the borehole image, you will hear about static and dynamic. It's very similar. It came from the same source. It's kind of seeing the stuff. Yani, uh, the dynamic image, it will give you, uh, generally to, to give you more details. Uh, it's like more pixels or more zoom in in the, in, the, in the features. And the static image from the static, it uses static uh, window of color. Dynamic, it's used dynamic window of colors in processing or in normalization. So this one to give you general uh, idea or a coarse contrast about what you see, that's why here in this zone, you see it all dark, but if you zoom in, you will see, start see the details. Uh, it's not like zoom in, sorry. I'm just using the, this word to make it simple for the beginners or simple for the people that they didn't hear about the uh, image before. It's like any uh, kind of uh, normalization. It's like general uh, in, in X-ray, in, in, uh, in, in CAT scan, in different uh, kind of scanning stuff. Uh, they use like different grades of visualization. Uh, this is not only in the oil industry. This one, I explain it, uh, how you see uh, every inclined bit, it's as a sine wave. If it's flat, it will get flat, not like this one. Uh, from where you get, we explain the angle that you have uh, this one and this one from triangometry, you can get uh, the angle, but the azimuth itself, how you get the azimuth, the azimuth is the, uh, the trough, the trough of the uh, sine wave itself. So because this one, for example, this one, and then you start unrolling or unfolding, you will get this one. This is the cross section of the hole. See, this, this is west direction, that this one means, you will see that this one at the west direction, this means that this layer is dipping to uh, or due to west uh, direction. It's not only, يعني, uh, this is not a must, يعني, in other uh, layers, maybe it can, this, uh, this trough, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, it can be uh, various. Uh, when we talk about borehole image, we, we talk about coverage, coverage of the image. As you are getting, uh, it's, to, it's function in two uh, aspects, either the number of beds itself. See, we, here we have four beds and here we have eight. So increasing the bed itself, it will increase the coverage like this one and decreasing the, removing this uh, beds or this arms or this sensors from here it will decrease the coverage. So uh, getting more sensors, simply, the, the, the aim of this one, of this slide, is a image can, uh, you can see the image in different ways based on two main aspects. Either it change the number of beds and the flaps or number of sensors, or the whole size itself, يعني, it can be uh, reduced. So you will see, start see, 
that the beds it's closer to each to each other you will see more coverage and getting wider it will be uh, like like my fingers and now this is closer to each other in case of uh, small hole or small hole diameter or start getting away from each other in case of uh, large hole uh, size and for sure the number my fingers it represents the number of bezel number of sensors this is just four sensor or if I put another four, it means that I added. Uh, so this is more coverage. Sorry for using uh, just just for uh, simplifying stuff. Uh, the main concept of the image uh, is to get the uh, the strata or to get the data itself uh, to get the depth of each layer. So you follow. We have technique called the interactive deep picking. This one, you trace what you see from the image. You trace this one, so then you start getting uh, this sine wave, and then you start to get the tip of the strata. Simply like you have outcrop, uh, you have layers, different layers, either flat layers or inclined layers. Then for each layer of this one, you should get a tadpole value or amount of dip and direction. Uh, so after picking, so you pick, you get this one, and then you start to get the value in front of each layer. Like this, for example. So see how many uh, picks we have done. This is a can, a can done automatically. Uh, uh, maybe I don't recommend this in, uh, in everything. Or it can done uh, manually. Uh, or what you call it interactive, uh, which this is this is what th th this is the one I prefer. You trace each one by your hand. It has a technique. We have different software can do uh, this stuff. Uh, you trace, then you get the value uh, based on what we, we 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 differentiate between this and this based on the contrast itself. As I mentioned, we have resistive layers and conductive layers. That's why the change between resistivity and conductivity, you start see this amount of layers. One, two, three, we have maybe have in front of us uh, hundreds of layers uh, here. Uh, or if we zoom in more, you can see lots of uh, layers. Based on what? Based on the contrast of resistivity that we have between uh, these layers. And this is one of the advantage of the image that it gives you high resolution resistivity or high contrast. Uh, يعني, see this curve? Uh, this is, for example, a gamma ray curve. But if you see the image, the, this, the curve will not reflect, maybe reflect the coarse one. Or, or I think this is a resistivity curve, sorry. The conventional resistivity. And this is a gamma ray curve. It can reflect only the major change. But the details, uh, you, will, you will see it reflected by the image. So for you guys, for who will study image, uh, one of the most important values for the image is the high resolution uh, aspect of the image itself. It gives you lots of details uh, about the strata or about the, your zone, uh, your reservoir zone. Uh, value current, value current, we use this term for uh, direction, for channel direction. Uh, maybe in seismic, you, if you have a, a piece, uh, a nice piece of uh, seismic like this one, you will get the direction of the channel, but this is usually will not happen. In many cases, to reach to this of, uh, of beauty, uh, you need to have a very good quality seismic in a very good regime, uh, no, nothing masking the data, lots of working in, 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 the, in the quality, in, in the data itself, if it's good quality and if it's excellent quality. But this is commonly, we don't have it. That's why the value of image data come, uh, comes in to, uh, to give you the direction of sand. If you get the direction of sand, this is what we call it the value Current from where we get it from the cross bedding. See this cross bedding. Uh, for for non geologists, cross bedding it's the main texture or the main. Uh, for example, if you are in the beach, you will see the waves uh, jumping on each other. This is building ripples or cross beds. 
So this is what we call this cross bits. And from the shape and direction of this cross bits, we get the direction itself. Yeah, and for example, uh, if you have like, a, this is a recent, uh, a recent stream done from, for one of our uh, uh, professional uh, colleagues in, uh, in imaging and in modeling as well, uh, Ayman. Uh, he captured that what, what we see it, uh, in, in, in a recent stream, and he, this is a cross section across this area. See how the, uh, the, the shape of the ripples or the shape of the cross bits that indicate the direction of the flow. So if the flow is like this, from this we can get the, the direction of the flow regime because this is building stuff extra. It, it comes like this. That means that the direction it's like this, or this is this is a cross section. This is a direction here, or this is a direction. In image as well, we start pick each one of these one to get the direction. So this is what we call it uh, paleo current interpretation to get the direction of the channel, and this is will be important to identify the direction of your reservoir in this well and for upcoming wells or farther wells. You, 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 you should know what is the, uh, the, the tendency of sand increasing in, other, uh, in, the, in the other direction, in which direction you will drill the next well, or the, the sand or the channel is going to this direction, this direction. So this is a value from this small cline form or from this small cross bits, you start build a trend for the, the channel. Fractures, uh, one of the most uh, and the most common uh, stuff we have it, uh, we, we use the image for determining it. Yani, uh, main, one of the main utilization for using the Borkwood image is to see the fractures. Uh, fractures, uh, as you see here, uh, this is just a uh, yani fancy outcrop for the fractures. It's not like this one. Uh, so here we have like two sets of fractures. So this fracture might be open and might be closed. And this is what we will uh, see it from the image that this fracture can contribute in, uh, in production because it's open spaces that can bring us the oil or gas, uh, or it can uh, bring us something else we don't need, which is water. Uh, if it's a level between an oil and water and fractures, you have a vertical fractures, it can uh, affect negatively your uh, reservoir production, your oil production, and can bring water from different levels. So at this case, we should plug it or avoid it. In the other case, if it's oil uh, zone, we, we need to look at the zone of the fracture to get more oil or to enhance the fracture itself to make a fracking to image can help us in this as well, either to make a frag or to uh, see uh, the impact of the frag or to see the natural fractures itself. Fractures, uh, simply it appear in the image as a high angle because it's cut in the strata, uh, either open fracture or uh, mineral uh, field or cemented fractures. This is the shape of the open fracture. It's a high angle one, conductive, it appears dark or conductive because it's the impact of the mud that the fill, the fracture is open and filled by the drilling mud. That's why it appears a uh, conductive in the image. Or, and, and vice versa, the resistive fracture is the fracture maybe I don't use, or I, it's tight or uh, decrease the porosity, not increasing the porosity. So it's filled by minerals, yani healed fracture, uh, cemented. We have another kind of right disc, two kind. We uh, it's natural fracture. This fracture inherited in the rock itself, or came after tectonic impact or deformation. That's why we have it. Not, they call it natural fractures. In the other side, we have some induced fracture. When in, uh, it came, it enhanced it or it uh, done by the impact of the drilling uh, uh, fluid impact or the drilling impact. We have what we call it drilling uh, induced fracture or hydraulic uh, fractures. Uh, also, this one we can capture from the image and it will add lots of information 
in studying the stress and the strain in the hole and the direction, the next direction uh, or in the directional drilling or drilling the next well. So to get the trend of this fracture or recommending the mud weight. So this is, will be important as well. This is this is example for the fractures, open fractures, open fractures can be uh, different widths, big one, small one, like this one. Uh, also, we can get the fracture aperture, what we call it fracture aperture, to see the widths of the fracture itself. It has a technique. I don't have the time to. Uh, uh, to explain it, uh, but this is what we call it the aperture of the fracture, the width of the fracture itself. Fault, also one of the important uh, stuff, we get it from the image. We have different kinds of faults, uh, either major faults or uh, uh, micro faults or uh, fault related fractures. Uh, this is just a small fancy fault. Uh, it's common in Schlumberger uh, handouts and uh, brochures for uh, which is very nice that indicate how uh, the image can capture uh, such features. Uh, you can any geologist uh, it can uh, I don't need to explain because it's very uh, simple and very clear for anyone. Uh, who studied uh, geology or uh, geophysics, that this is uh, a fault plane, this is uh, displacement between two uh, stuff. Also, we can get the uh, fault from the, uh, as I mentioned, from the dip itself. Uh, you have a drag pattern, you have a contrast between a zone and another zone in, in, a, in a regional scale or in a, in a big scale. So you get a drag pattern, you get uh, contrast between zone and the other uh, zone, change in, uh, in logs as well. This is a kind of integration, deformation in some uh, faults need uh, also uh, lots of effort uh, for people who work in image. Uh, this is an experience. Yeah, and it's not, it, 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 uh, you cannot uh, learn it in a one day. In a one day. Yeah, and, uh, it needs uh, all these features to get used, it's like, like seismic interpretation and image interpretation is very, very similar to seismic interpretation. Theory is something and the reality is, is, is similar, but you need to uh, practice lots to see a lot, to see a lot. We have lots of environment, lots, lots of uh, reservoirs, lots of faces, lots of fractures, lots of... But the concept is same, but experience, uh, came with practice and conformity, uh, as I explained, uh, high angle and then followed by uh, low angle, uh, like high angle stuff in the image. We explain it from the dip, but here in the image is, is, is beside high angle stuff and low angle stuff. In situ straighten, this is what we call it uh, breakout. Uh, uh, breakout, it's like due to sheer, sheer action. Yani, uh, for example, if, if you have uh, this paper, if, if we consider that this, this one uh, is the whole, usually the whole, it's be, it will be like this. But when you have like a big action in, or a shearing action like this in the hole itself, you will come up with some deformation in the sides of the hole. This is simply what is the breakout. So shearing action can make like ovalization or deformation. You will change from the circular shape to this oval shape or this deformation happen in two sides of the hole. And this is what we call it breakout. Image can uh, give you the indication for these deformation happens uh, that occurred in the two sides, uh, opposite sides in the hole. Uh, it can be traced by uh, the borehole image as well. And also what we call it induced fracture. Induced fracture, as I mentioned, it's inherited, it, it's uh, induced by drilling and uh, mud uh, operation. And it comes like vertical and, and will not intersect to each other. This is what we call it uh, vertical, vertical fracture. It's not sinusoidal shape. 
uh, it, it may come in a side, but also will not intersect uh, because it will be uh, like this shape, vertical uh, fracture to opposite sides. And uh, this one indicate the maximum horizontal stress and breakout will indicate the minimum horizontal uh, stress. Uh, VAGS also, uh, we have, uh, VAGS is a cavity, uh, small cavities in, in rocks usually happen in carbonate. As you see, uh, this shape, it's typical shape of VAGS, of VAGS or cavities or open spaces or uh, what we call it uh, secondary prosty stuff. Yani this has happened due to, due to diagenetic process uh, after sedimentation. Uh, this is for uh, most of geologists know this. Uh, so it, it reflected uh, on the body. It's very similar to what you see it in our uh, in the outcrop. You will see it in the image as well. And we reach to a level of uh, like a cave, yani, uh, as you see here, yani, very big one. Sedimentary structures, maybe the grains. I see. See, this is this is a real example, uh, very nice example. Uh, uh, see how the change in the grain size. Uh, how you see a, a very nice grain. So this is you see it from the image. Mm. Based on this one, you can build lots of interpretation about the faces, the positional environment, prosty, lots of stuff. Uh, or uh, the stuff that happened due to uh, biogenic uh, activity or sorry, يعني, uh, what you call it, bioturbation, the fossil itself, uh, the impact of burrows, uh, animals and stuff like this. Uh, Faces, faces. it's conclude uh, all of this. Uh, Faces, uh, it it can it, it include all of these features because the faces faces is the uh, the, the cluster of, of of parameters and uh, and features uh, for a rock. Yani for example, sandstone, it can appear in in, in different faces. Uh, it can be crusted, it can be massive can be well laminated, not laminated. This is what we call it geological fishes. Uh, it's not lithology. In, in a geological wise, it's not the lithology. It's the shape of the lithology, how this lithology appear. And hence, it will give us indication about the depositional environment. So what makes the fishes different for sandstone? Because sandstone, it might be de de deposited in a channel, uh, rivers, uh, fans, uh, Eulian deposits, uh, submarine deposits, deep marine deposits. So sand is present in everywhere. But as, as a result of this, we see different faces of sand. This is what we call it, uh, faces. And this is also what we get it from the image. It can get uh, the faces, for example, this is uh, a channel faces uh, start by the channel body, uh, then what we call it levy, uh, then the overbank deposit. This one it picked from the image uh, itself. So this is will conclude uh, lots of stuff uh, after interpreting the deep data, seeing the image, do integration between logs and deep data, and what we see in the image to end up by uh, faces, and then we can. Uh, reach to a level of uh, the model itself, uh, the facies model. So uh, uh, as a milestone, conclude to see how bad the channels appear, how the fans appears, getting the facies from different. Uh, uh, there is uh, lots of uh, stuff we can uh, say about borehole image. I hope uh, this one, uh, I'm just, uh, Concluded uh, many stuff, make it very simple for you guys to uh, to get it. Uh, yeah, uh, next step. Uh, uh, recently, I see this one that uh, they are planning to uh, to use uh, borehole image and 
in Mars space to get the strain and stress uh, changes in, in the surface of uh, Mars. Uh, I don't know, maybe this is not implemented yet, but uh, there is a research about this. Uh, they will uh, use this. a kind of borehole images, ultrasonic borehole images. About this. Uh, so, uh, yani, uh, we'll see you there uh, in the space. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh,